What's up, guys? How you doing today? Happy Wednesday. Lindsay, Ooh. what's up? How you doing? I am wonderful on this lovely Wednesday. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm uh, I'm home alone, which is kind of weird. Um, oh, no. My wife has gone abroad. Uh, she's in Tulum for like two weeks. So I'm here by myself. It's kind of nice. Well, you um, have the dogs. You're not totally by yourself. It's me and the dogs. Uh, we're good. They're hanging out. I got two hanging out right next to me here in my office. I got one looking for food around the house. Lindsay, you've been to my house. You know it. <laughs> I bet it's Bella. It's Bella. It is Bella. Bella. Bella is a Bella is a puggle, and she we think she has a tapeworm or a hole in her stomach oh. or something. I'm not real, but uh, <laughs> the dog just eats everything. It's ridiculous. She's um, a foodie. She is insane. Remember when we did we did the we did a live event at my house uh, last fall, mm -hmm. and Bella jumped on the table and took a whole plate of food from one of our guests. And it she was, was like, so cute. She was just like walking around the patio, just like snagging steaks off of people's plates. Yeah, it was great. That is my puggle. And if anybody it's has a pug or a, or a puggle, you get it. Like that's how they are. So it's really really. Okay, so I uh, got a couple things here. First of all, it's really great to see you guys live. Uh, Lindsay and I do this every single week. Well, not Lindsay and I every week, but I'm here mm -hmm. every single week. Um, and we do our live trainings here on our social media channels every Wednesday at 1230 Central. We do four weeks of marketing. And this is week two. Today, we're going to talk about cold calling. So we'll get into that in a second. This is week two. Uh, of four weeks. Then we have four weeks of sales training and Cindy Phillips is here. We got Ryan O'Hare a little bit here. Uh, we're probably gonna have some guests doing that, but it's mainly me and Cindy Phillips. And then we got four weeks of tech crap. I don't like to talk about the tech anymore. I like to talk about making money now, uh, but you guys that like that tech stuff, we'll talk about tech, but it's, it's cyber security stack. For you all. I know we try and cater to everyone, yeah. but um, we talk about the cybersecurity stack, the cybersecurity assessment stack, how you should do that. Um, we're potentially going to have our, uh, we have a secret service agent that's going to be at our live event in Nashville, which I'm going to talk about in a minute here. Uh, I think we're going to get him to come on with us as well. Um, so I uh, want to just kind of point out, you're going to see this going across the bottom here. I just added that there. We have our live event, our next live event coming up in about 20 days, give or take here. Uh, it is our Amp Up Your MSP event live in Nashville, Tennessee. There are a few tickets left. Um, actually, they're kind of standing room only tickets, but we can make it work. Um, more importantly, uh, Amanda was able to extend the room block. Uh, so we got more room blocks added. We are bordering on selling out this entire hotel, which is awesome. Uh, it's at the Margaritaville Hotel in downtown Nashville, which I'm really excited about. But uh, we got a pre-day May 16th, which is all about how to do a cybersecurity risk assessment, including we got some speakers from vendors all over the place. And then we got two full days, including our guest speaker, Mr. Christopher Voss, who wrote the book, Never Split the Difference, also have a, has a documentary coming out called T Tactical Empathy on Netflix. A lot of cool stuff along with that. So we'd love to see you guys with us in Nashville. So that's cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm um, excited for that. Also, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I've decided I'm going to fly. I'm not going to drive, by the way. Oh, Speaking okay. That's good. Lindsay yeah. lives uh, like rural Georgia. I don't yeah. know. Like in the boonies in, in Georgia. In the middle of nowhere. It's um, I thought you were going to, why are you flying? It's a cotton field, actually. I've got cotton and peanuts and peaches. I'm lying. There's not actually. Okay. <laughs> it's like, wow. Okay. That's the first I've heard of that. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, we also have a special guest, us, guest with us today. Logan Kennedy is here. He is our. And, and we just had in the green room, we're like 10 minutes. I was like, Logan's our expert. He's like, I'm not an expert. I'm like, bro, if you're not going to expert, I'm kicking you off this call. It's literally going to be that simple. So <laughs> we we'll bring Logan like on. Mindset coaching right then. Yeah. And Logan runs our, at Seven Figure MSP, he runs our cold calling team, uh, our cold lead gen team, all that stuff. So he runs that with us kind of underneath me and Lindsay and Amanda, uh, more with us, I guess, than, you know, we're not a big uh, titles place or tiers place, but. Anyway, uh, so I want to bring Logan on. Lindsay, anything you want to say here before I, I get uh, the yeah, no, I'm excited. In the room I know I'm going to have some of our clients in today. They, they were tasked with more marketing homework, so they should be in the room right now. Hello, my, my marketing machiners. Um, they're going to be joining in. I see we got Andre, Yoli, Brian coming in. Hi, Zachary. 
uh, they're joining and they're going to be listening into today's call as well on cold calling because they're all tasked with going out and filling up their webinars, their lead generation webinar campaigns. Um, so they're going to be in here with us today. So I'm excited for today's chat yeah. and especially because we have Logan here. Yeah. I mean, Good to see you, buddy. How you doing? I'm an expert. As you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Welcome we were dealing with some of Logan's imposter syndrome. He's like, well, I've only made 10,000 cold calls myself. I'm like, bro, you are an expert. If you don't change your title, we are kicking you out of the room today. <laughs> so, yeah. You know what? It. I'll, I'll take the praise. I appreciate it. And I wanted to welcome you to the room of doors. It's not quite a, a Chris Weiser big old sign, but it, it'll do for now. Right, Lindsay? Yeah. The room of many doors. a lot of doors. Why do you have so many doors? Oh, I'm going to put you, I should put you solo up on the screen. Why do you have so many doors, bro? Check these out. <laughs> you know, I mean, you need storage. Like when you have a lot of things. It's, storage? What am I supposed to do? That's so yeah. like adulting, like storage. Yeah. Am I an All adult right. now? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Adult. Yeah. So you're an expert and an adult. So, okay, Lindsay, I'm going to share your screen. Uh, let's get away with it. You guys, if you have questions with us today, we got a pretty in-depth training uh, on cold calling. And one thing I want to say before we get in here, cold calling, cold lead gen is kind of a naughty word in MSP land. Uh, and I understand that you guys don't like to do it, but it is an essential part of growing your business. And I know I totally know that you love referrals and I'm not, I'm never going to be one to sit here and say, get rid of referrals just because we're pushing you to do cold lead gen and warm lead gen and events and webinars. That doesn't mean you drop referrals. It doesn't mean you drop one strategy. One of the most important things about marketing is your stacking methods. And it's really, really critical to have various different things that you could learn and evolve and then turn that into a machine that runs. Thus our marketing machine piece. So it's really, really critical that you realize that cold lead gen is a mission critical part of this and it becomes a faucet that you can turn on and off. And when I say that, here's a great example of this. So Logan and Lee Ban, they're, they're kind of the guys on, on our SDR team in the back end here. We were driving people to our live event. That was something we were actively working on, driving people, driving people. Yesterday, that faucet, actually, sorry, Friday, that faucet turned off. And what turned on on Monday, Logan, was the back to booking consulting calls. And I think we're eight or nine calls deep in the last three days just for consulting calls, meaning our live or our seven figure MSP interview calls. So they're booking people in with our sales team. We turn off that faucet, turn on another one. Versus waiting for the clients to come to us. You can start to control your pipeline with cold lead gen. And I'm not saying you just call them and threaten them to meet with you, but you give them something of value. You give them other things and we'll get into that. But I just want to put that out there for you guys. This is a really important strategy to growing. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Lindsay, I'm going to share your screen and I'll let you take it away. And then I'll chime in. Logan, feel free to chime in as you go here and we'll go from there. So Lindsay, yeah. boom, boom. All so right. Chris, one awesome. thing I wanted to add um, mm -hmm. is just what you said right there. Like Lee Ban and myself, we're calling for the event and then you could switch it off and immediately just start calling for another offer. It mm -hmm. shows you how powerful this skill set is because you are now marketing in two different ways, but using one mechanism. Yeah. So just okay. the fact that you're willing to pick up the phone, such a cheat code. Yeah. yeah agreed. And it's, it is a transferable skill set. So it's like, it doesn't matter what you're selling. If you're driving people to your webinar, which we're going to be talking about today, or you want to get them straight to the appointment with you. It's transferable. doesn't matter. You can do it over and over again. Yep. Okay. So welcome in everyone. A uh, little recap. If you are new here inside of our YouTube channel or LinkedIn or Facebook group, wherever you are on the interwebs, hello. Uh, we are um, right. We're live. I'm in Georgia. Chris is in Texas. Logan is in Florida. Logan, I'll soon be in Florida with you, but we- um, With him? What? What? Well, not with you. I'll, I mean, basically, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're going to be close. We'll be in the same city. We'll be like 30 miles from each other. Yeah. Logan's going to um, show show us where the cool food spots are. In, in Chris is just jealous. Yeah. He's so yeah. jealous. You got me. You got me. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So um, we are uh, a coaching and consulting firm for MSPs, just like most of you watching this. We focus on teaching you skill sets 
teaching you strategy that's going to help your business grow. So this is our second week of a four-week series that we're doing. Um, last week, we actually covered our full pie, uh, full playbook at a glance. So we covered like this 50,000 foot view of how it is that we help you do that. So really there's a lot of like reframing that has to go um, in this process because you go from relying on referrals alone or you go from relying on maybe SEO, which is not always controllable, or, you know, just maybe some uh, word of mouth marketing, or you've got this brick and mortar shop and, you know, you've got a couple of ads here and there, but like Chris and Logan were saying, it's not really like a faucet that you can turn on and you can say, okay, this year we want to add 500,000 in total gross revenue. It's really difficult to do that when you don't have a consistent rinse and repeat method. So that is the purpose of uh, our four week series here. This is what we teach people in our seven figure MSP program. This is what um, I'll actually be teaching on, what Chris will be teaching on, um, and our guests are gonna be teaching on in our live event in May, which you can sign up for down there. Um, so if you ever have any questions, like as we go through this, please comment in the chat, reach out to us, reach out to Chris or myself. Um, we can always point you in the right direction, send you over some resources um, and get you moving forward. Okay, we, we don't bite. We, Chris may make a, an inappropriate joke sometimes, but really he's harmless. Like he's not. Never. Never. <laughs> never. never. <laughs> All right. Um, you can actually see our coaching team right here. There's Chris. Cindy is our sales trainer. She's phenomenal. You've got Ryan O'Hara, who is our new VP. What is his, what's his title now? VP of member services. VP of member services. So Ryan was an MSP just like you all. He recently sold his MSP because he's got those systems on lock. He's our systems guy. Um, he had some super, um, you know, really successful run. And now he's on our team full time. So we're excited to have Ryan and myself. And you're probably here because you want to scale. And you're wondering how it is that you can grow. And you probably keep seeing Chris tag you with the everyone tag. And you're like, well, I may as well be here anyways. So let me see what it is they're talking about. So welcome in, everyone. Uh, last week, we covered the playbook, the cold prospecting playbook. Today, we're going to be walking through cold calls. Next week, Wednesday, same exact time, we'll do cold emails. So we'll actually be talking about how to set up your cold email campaign. And then week four, we'll go through our lead generation webinar strategy. So uh, what we teach in the marketing machine, which is uh, our, our marketing coaching division inside of Seven Figure MSP, is how to get leads, very hot and qualified leads, through a lead generating webinar. Okay, so we're going to be doing that in week four. So you definitely want to be back for week four. Okay, so quick review. Uh, whenever we are talking about cold calls. And today we're actually going to go through some scripts. We're going to give you your own script. Like you can literally have it, go practice this. But whenever we're talking about cold calls, we have to remember where we're going. Like what is the purpose of this cold call? Okay. Because I have heard this a lot that you're making these calls and you're like, none of them are converting. I'm getting hung up on people are like cussing me out. I, what's, what's broken? What am I doing wrong? My very <laughs> What is your ask? What are you asking people in this cold call? What, what are you saying whenever you get on the call with them? And a lot of times they're leading with fear or they're leading with something that's sort of aggressive that's trying to get them to get on a phone call with them. Okay. And I'm not against you moving them into an appointment with you, but we have to remember that there is a process to follow. And whenever you call someone for the first time, they are a cold lead. So if you look at the very, very beginning of this playbook, they're a cold lead. They don't know you. They don't trust you. They sure as heck don't like you or love you. There's no, uh, there's, there's no foundation that's been built. Okay. So it's probably going, there's pro a couple of things. There's going to take multiple touch points in between. So that's why we couple this. We back the strategy up with emails. We back this strategy um, up with your webinar. We're moving them into a webinar or a live conversion event, such as a webinar, a seminar, a masterclass, uh, maybe an FTC workshop or, um, you know, some type of educational training where you can build that no love trust factor. Okay. But you just got to keep it into, in, into perspective. If I'm calling these people and I'm basically saying, Hey, you, you know, you may be breached this year. We need to get you on an appointment. We need to talk to you. They're probably going to meet that, that type of aggression or that type of, um, you know, very forward type of calling 
with resistance. And then when, what are you going to come back with? More resistance. So then when we have resistance meeting resistance, you're probably not going to get super great results. Okay. That's probably why cold calling has felt a little off to you, or maybe you've never done it before because you have experienced calls like that yourself. You've experienced calls where you, where it's like, dude, why are you calling me and arguing with me? Like, I don't want to talk to you. Like you're still arguing with me, like get off the phone with me. And so that maybe has given you a bad experience, you know, from, from your own, from your own past calls. Okay. So when we walk through the strategy and Logan, I can't wait to get your feedback on this and how you do it with your 10,000 calls and experience. But how do we shift this from being this like really weird, gross, like salesy, spammy call. And we actually turn it into something that people thank us for. Like now, like people would literally thank our clients. Like, thank you for calling and telling me about this. Yeah. Thank you so much for thinking about us. Like now we're, we're turning it into something that was once seen as salesy and spammy and like a waste of time. Um, you know, they're blocking me, they're cussing me out, they're hanging up on me to now they're like, thank you for calling me. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited for today's workshop as we move through this. All right. I see over here in the chat, someone said, yep, the ability to turn leads into appointments on demand equals money. Yes, absolutely. And then somebody said, Logan is adulting hard with all the storage <laughs> doors in the background. Attempting to, attempting to at least. We're attempting to. We got to get you a, a view that's not directly into the cold air event. Yeah, that's to represent cold leads. See, it was oh, like strategic. It keeps yep. me on edge when I'm getting like cold air like on it. my back. You know, Lindsay, you mentioned something earlier that I want to point out too, yeah. uh, which is multiple touch points. And I don't remember if it was us talking about this last week or if I heard it on a different deal, but the amount of touch points that you have to hit with hit people with in 2023 is like 20 to 30 to 40 now versus it was like 10 or eight or seven, three, five years ago. So you have to understand your single single email to them that, or maybe your cold uh, or your warm newsletter that you send out is one touch. And it takes like 20 to 30 to 40 touches to get these people to acknowledge you. And then it's gotta be something that they're also ready for. That's a big thing here as well. Timing, making sure that they, you know, they may already have an IT company that they're working with and you called them six months ago, calling them and sending them valuable, real content. All these touches is what makes you relevant because you hit it when they're actually ready now. So it's really important things to think about. I yeah. agree because at this point in the day and age we're in right now, when you reach out to someone, you are a scammer until proven otherwise. So the way you could prove otherwise is with an omni-channel approach, whether that be you're touching them with emails, with calls on LinkedIn, the more touch points you have, the less of a scammer you will be at the end of the day. Yeah, you become a human, like you become real. Oh, I see them here. Actually, we just had, um, we have a thing called first time appointments as a service that is that right now it's released to our seven figure MSP clients. Anyways, we had a client that said, Lindsay, we, we've booked that, you know, we had this lead, um, you know, we took the call. She was kind of like on the edge. So I invited her to where I was speaking at the chamber. So this lead then goes to the chamber, watches this, this um, tr training or this uh, speech they did there, talking about the FTC safeguards, speaking about the exact same thing. And then they turn around, sign off on the CSRA. Okay, so that's that's how we do that. It's like maybe they, they're, you, you're telling them this stuff, but they don't get it yet. They're like, oh, does this really apply to me? Who are you to tell me this? So then you have to get creative and say, okay, can I bring them in over here? Can I go add them on, on LinkedIn? Can I bring them into this other training that I'm doing somewhere to help speed up this trust process? So uh, great point on that, on omni-channel uh, touch points and just creating that trust and, and putting that into perspective. You're, not, you're probably not going to get where you want to go in, in one try. All right. So we want to talk about some numbers here. I know that my MSPs in the room love to talk about numbers and you love to quantify things. Um, I also think that this is going to help give you just a point of reference. So as you're out doing your calls, or maybe you have a team doing your calls, or maybe you've outsourced this to someone or a company or agency, and you're wondering, well, what, what is a point of reference? Like, what is the zone of normalcy that we need to be looking at? What we have seen and this is from our clients here in uh, MSP land. And I, I'll be honest with you guys. We talked about this last week. You work a very hard industry. <laughs> it is not easy 
So these numbers um, can, can go up or down depending on your experience, depending on what geographic area you're in, and depending on your skill set. So how long have you been doing this? And, and frankly, how good are you at communicating the value of them going on to that next step? Okay. So what we see, and Logan, I would love to get your opinion on this, but what yep. we see is with 100 calls that are getting answered, okay, if you're speaking to 100 people, you're probably going to book 10 first-time appointments from them, okay? So you're going to get 10 people that say, yep, let's have a conversation. Let, let's book a time for a 20-minute conversation. Let's talk more about this, okay? Then from there, those 10 first-time appointments typically lead to two paid cybersecurity risk assessments. Okay. And if you're not familiar with the seven figure MSP sales process, all roads lead to the CSRA. Um, this, like we live this, we breathe this, we die by this, like live by the sword, die by the sword. All roads lead to the CSRA. So we're not skipping steps. We're not trying to sell them straight into our program, uh, into our, <laughs> our packages or our stacks, whatever. We're moving them through this very, very strategic process. So 100 answered calls, 10 first time appointments, two CSRAs. Now, out of those two CSRAs, one typically goes forward to be an assigned off client within that same sales cycle. That other person, they may or may not need to review their budget. They may or may not need to, um, you know, work through some things, whatever the case is, they'll most likely come back in three to six months. Okay. So they're not gone. We're not going to take them out of our nurture campaigns. We're going to keep nurturing them. We're going to keep that proximity. But we know that out of every two CSRAs, one of them will probably close within that same cycle. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that, Logan. Do you see these numbers um, in other industries? Like what, what does this look like across the board for you guys? So I would want to speak to the people who are really getting started and haven't called much yet. It's a very dangerous game to get focused on the output, the result, what we will get. And it's very good to focus on your input because that is what you genuinely can control. So if I'm doing 100 cold calls today, maybe 15 pick up, but I can't control. I can't say, okay, 50 of these people are going to pick up. But what I can say is I'm going to do my 100 calls and the result of my pitch will turn into, we'll see, who knows. Um, so just that day in, day out, picking whatever your input could be and just sticking to it, that is the key getting going. I would say as a general rule of thumb, if you could convert on 10% of the people who do pick up, you are doing well. There are different industries, of course, like in the B2C space, uh, it might be a bit more difficult than that. But in B2B here as MSP owners targeting different businesses, I would say if you're converting on 10% of what's picking up, you're doing a great job. But some days, 10% of your total calls might not pick up. So don't get too focused on the output and just focus on what you could put in and what you could control at the beginning. That's so good. Uh, we had we had Jason over here in the chat say, what is the standard? Let me put this over here on the screen. Um, he said, what is the standard in terms of cold calls per week per salesperson? So what you just <laughs> mentioned, Logan, was like, I'm going to do 50 calls today. Would you say that that's average or like what what's like an average number that you would that you would be looking at for your sales team? If if I have someone doing this full time, I would say the minimum KPI you'd want them at is 100 a day. 100 a day is like that money spot. Um, but that is also dependent on the industry and what type of dialer you use, how advanced they are. Because <laughs> someone who's more advanced might be able to have a two line dialer and they're calling two people at the same time. Whoever picks up, they grab that call then they could do 200 in a day. So it really just depends on how advanced your person is. I would say if they have a one line <clears throat> dialer, you got one person go for a hundred calls a day. And I think what's also really critical about this that, that a lot of people don't think about is how critical the list is picking a vertical, having something that speaks to them. Uh, I noticed Lindsay's got up behind her on her right. She's got that FTC safeguards thing on the wall up there. Um, we spend a lot of time in our marketing machine and coaching program talking about the new cybersecurity rules and having the conversations with the right people, picking car dealerships or uh, wealth, or, sorry, or uh, accounting firms or specific verticals that you can go to and then offering something to those specific people, having some value versus just calling up to with no plan. Having yeah. a plan is really important. 
Uh, I also, I oftentimes, Logan, I don't know if you heard me talk about this, but I oftentimes I compare sales and cold calling and all this stuff to dating. And it's oddly similar. And I actually go back to the, to the movie Hitch a lot. That was Will Smith and Kevin James that are in that movie. And they were always talking about how, you know, you're just a doctor. I think it was like Dr. Love or something they called him, but um, the date doctor, that's what they called him. And then that he was a scammer and all this other stuff. And he's like, you know what? I'm not that at all. It's just that guys want to have a plan. And it's exactly how this works. Like if you're just going to go into sales and prospecting and cold calling and warm calling and booths and webinars without a plan, you're just literally throwing stuff at the wall and hoping stuff sticks. So it's really important to have some structure and to have some KPIs and to actually have things that the end user, and this goes into any form of marketing. I talk about this with Maria and the rest of our team a lot, talking to some of our vendors. It's critical that you actually are delivering something that the prospect cares about. All that stuff matters. Logan, am I off base on that or what's your thought? You weren't at all. And, and, and something that I would mention, if you're trying to make this a more efficient process, a lot of it is going to come down to your targeting. Who are you helping? Where are they? What software are they using? Whatever it is, the more targeted your list is, that means the less gatekeepers you're going to have to go through. That means uh, the less research you're going to have to do before. You already know their pain points. You already know what they need. So if you have a more targeted list, this is just going to get so much easier for you in general. Spending time on the list is really critical. That's, exactly. that's actually the thing that I see most business owners try and skimp on the most because they're like, Oh, I'll just go buy a list from so-and-so. I'll just go, I'll just go get a library card and go to reference USA or info USA at the library or on their website. And I'll just build a list and then we'll just dump it in front of people. And guys, you need to spend some time on this. Imagine if we were doing this and we just randomly built a list and a quarter of them were MSPs. Yeah. And the other 75% were just business owners around the country. How successful would my campaign be? It'd be trash. But You're we spend time. a lot of time, Logan, you and I and Lee Van, we spend a lot of time working on lists, making sure it's tight, making sure we got everything there because then the act of doing the call is productive as opposed to it being a waste of time. You spend most of the time sharpening your ax, not chopping down the tree. Yeah. Oh, You're not even athletic. That's impressive. Wow. That was impressive. Okay, Logan. <laughs> Where did I hear that? Who knows? It's more know. adult stuff. All right. Okay. So this is this is really these are really good conversations. Um, I, I love what you said, Logan, about putting like focusing on what your output is or focusing on your input. Actually, like yep. focusing on what you can control. Hey, I don't know how many people are going to answer the phone, but I know that I can make one hundred calls. That's exactly. within my range of control. So I think that's a really, really key um, thing that you can focus on. Hey, Lindsay, we just had a question come up. Yeah. Are you addressing, do you see that? Look at that, that bottom question, because I maybe want to address that now. Do you have that addressed in your slides or, or can I hit on that? Um, yeah, you can hit on this. Okay. We don't really okay. I'm going to bring this up on the screen here, guys. It's going to cover up Logan because it's kind of big. Honestly, it looks way better this way. That's good. Uh, <laughs> but I think this is really, really a key, a key point. A lot of MSP owners... What they try and do is they try and hire a salesperson and they expect, expect that salesperson to prospect, run around, lead gen, all this other stuff. And then they expect them to close the deal. That is not the same personality type guys. The people that are good at calling are not going to be good at closing. Logan, am I wrong on that? We just had this conversation. We can't talk about some of it because it was a little bit inappropriate, but uh, <laughs> we just had this conversation over lunch. But I think really quick, I'm going to go on, but I just want you to say, do you think that's accurate? I, I do think it's accurate. I'll, I'll leave it there. I'm okay, not well, closing we'll, we'll come back. your MSP. But, but the personality type of your prospector is going to be a completely different personality type of your closer. So here's what I recommend. This is exactly what we teach in our coaching program. Your appointment setters should be driving leads to your closers calendars. Okay. That's exactly what I do in my world. Uh, it's exactly what I've done in my world for the last 15 years, mind you. Um, my prospectors are not the same people as our closers. They're different personality types. My closers are aggressive and strong. Most importantly, they deal with objections. They're objection handlers and their job is to close the deal. The, and my job as the owner 
CEO founder is to drive leads to my closer's calendar. Two totally different people. Now, can you, and here's, here's the caveat on this. Can you as the MSP owner be the closer without question? In fact, my opinion is you should start as the closer, even if you're an engineer in the beginning, because nobody loves you like you early, especially early stages. We could definitely get people to do that down the road. But I will tell you, if I'm closing deals, I'm close. Like if I'm clo taking closing calls, which I do periodically, I definitely talk to some people once in a while because we fine tune systems. And sometimes I get in, my closing rate is about 60%, but I'm the guy, like I'm the man in my world, right? I, Lindsay, I see your no. face. No, yeah. no, you're lucky you can't no. see my face right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so the bottom line is, if I hand that off to a person, the most realistically I'm going to expect for them is a 40% close rate. That's the most I'm going to expect for them. Because even though I'm teaching them and I'm giving them help and all these other things, they're still not me. They're still not the guy that these people are seeing on the internet and all this other stuff. It's no different than any other product that's out there. Like if I'm, if I'm trying to go to a cost plus drugs, I'm surely going to buy immediately if I talk to Mark Cuban. It's just what it is. If I talk to his salespeople, well, we'll see how it works. It's just part of the deal. So you have to understand the whole concept here. And I'm going to take this down. The whole concept here is for you to build a system of massive amounts of leads. Look at those hundred cold calls turn into 10 first time appointments. Those 10 first time appointments then have a ratio of, okay, those 10 first time appointments then maybe have a two cybersecurity risk assessment ratio. Mm -hmm. And then that one, turns into one new client. Now, if you can start to stack systems on systems and systems, and if you turn that 10 FTAs, when I was in my last couple of years of my MSP, we were averaging 40 FTAs a month. Every month, 40 first time appointments a month, which means we were signing and we didn't do the cybersecurity risk assessment back then, but we did a full network assessment. The cybersecurity risk assessment has much better chances of closing and much higher rate of closing because of the way the market is right now. But we would take those 40, it would turn into eight CSRAs or risk assessments at the time, which would turn into four new clients a month. It's just a ratio and sales is a numbers game. That's what this whole thing is about. Yep. And we even have clients, like I'll even speak to that piece, like that number can go up. So the, right now you're at a 20% close ratio for your CSRAs. We have some clients in the marketing machine. They're like, Lindsay, I only need five first time appointments because I only, I, I can take all five of them. And four out of those five are going to go forward to that CSRA. So, and that's just because they've been in the program for several years. They have their uh, process on lock and they're getting in qualified leads. They're not trying to get on the phone with any and everybody that will talk to them. They're niche specific. They're super hyper focused and they're being very strategic in who it is they're getting on the phone with them to begin with. So you can um, actually do that when you have a fine tuned system, but yeah, early stages, I think it's important to establish a system and most MSPs don't, most, most businesses don't, honestly. Um, and you can see how just a little bit, I saw a TikTok yesterday. I was, I kind of watched TikTok for some trends and some other stuff. I saw a TikTok yesterday that um, was talking about, I do the dances mostly. That's right. Why. You know, yeah. just me doing it. That. Uh, but it was about, um, you want to know how to differentiate your business? Most businesses in America, do you know what the average American response time to a customer inquiry is it's like days, isn't it? 48 hours. Yeah. So they said, you want to differentiate your business out of the box, put a system in place to answer in 15 minutes. Got to be 15 minutes. Boom. Like it's freaking simple, but most people can't be bothered with leads. Yep. It doesn't take, it really doesn't take much to stand out to like be, to be that guy. As Chris says, yeah. You can be yeah. that guy. Yeah. And that's the best um, part of building a system because once you have that system in place, like take, take this like webinar for an example. While we've been sitting here, there have been three new calls that have been booked while we've just been sitting here. And that's the perfect part of having a system in place because then once it's truly fine-tuned, you could just let it run and it'll bring those leads to you. That's the beautiful part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Keep I'm going, Lindsay. Yeah. All right. So good stuff. Let's keep rocking and rolling. I want us to be able to actually go through our script together. Um, so first we're going to walk through, so you can actually see a little um, blurb from one of our marketing machiners. So this is Randy Bryan. He said, Hey, we've got our webinar scheduled. We've um, let's see, we've done our cold callings. Our, we've done our cold calls and we already have six CPAs that have said yes. So you can literally see this in practice. Our, our clients do this every single day. So you see Randy there said specific vertical. Mm -hmm. 
cold called down to a very targeted list and then gave them something of value. There was just a question in there that said during cold calls, can we give away, do some type of giveaway? This is the giveaway, Raphael. Like this is, this is the giveaway. I'm going to put this on the screen really quick. Here's your giveaway, Raphael. And he said, oh, besides the free CSRE and you're, and you're moving into never, ever giving away a free cybersecurity risk assessment. The second you, you know, if you want to give away a webinar, it's expected to give away a webinar. It's expected to give away a live event or, or a booth or something like that, or maybe some swag, but you never want to go into having your services and having the first experience with your services being free because you're, you're, you're going immediately to transactional. You can differentiate that much easier. So Lindsay, I'll let you keep going, sorry. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, so I wanna, I'm curious, those of you that are listening and we've got some really good participation over here, but I wanna hear from you. Have you ever done cold calls? Yes or no? Why or why not? Tell me what your experience has been. Um, I, I see someone said cold calling works. This is the giveaway. Yes, I love it. Um, let me know in the chat. Have you ever tried cold calling? Why or why not? What's worked for you? Just kind of fire, you know, fire away in the chat on that. I would love to hear your feedback on it. Um, and, and I want you, if you have done it, just come in today and, and, and be willing to learn. Okay. Maybe your process has worked. That's great. Or maybe there's some things that you can think back on that could have been, been improved a little bit. So I want you to come in with your half or your glass half empty and, and just be willing to learn. Okay. Um, all right. So Zach says we do 100 a day and we get an average of one to two appointments per week. Okay. Let's go. Let's yeah, that's do what, it. That's one of our elite members. I love that buddy. That's good. That's job. awesome. All right. Someone said, I've never done a cold call. I'm too scared. This training is for you then. Thank you so much. I'm, I thank you for sharing that with us. That takes guts to share that and to put that out there. Um, so thank you for sharing that. I hope that this gives you some ground to stand on. I hope that as we go through today's <laughs> script, we'll actually be sharing a script with you as well. Um, that you use this to help you to, to take that first step. Okay. Um, someone said, I'm an engineer and I'm awful at sales. Just don't have that trait. Um, it is, I, I'm going to go so far to say that it's not an innate trait. It is a skill that is built over time. 100%. So you can change that. You can work on that. It's just like a muscle. 99% um, of our clients that come in are terrible at sales. And then within a few months, they're posting in the Facebook, just close this, just did that. Like, so it, it's a skill set. You got to build it. You got to build that muscle. Um, someone said, yes, great experience. What works? Relax. Talk to a person the way that you would want someone to talk and speak with you. Exactly. Uh, reciprocation. Absolutely. All right, guys. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to walk us through our framework. So whenever you call someone, so the person, I can't see your name. I have to keep saying person because it doesn't let me see your name. It's a Facebook user. Um, but to the person that says, I'm a little scared to make these calls. I've never done it before. Uh, I just don't know if that's for me. Uh, you want to make this be as human as possible. Okay. So whenever you call someone for the first time, we're not jumping straight into our pitch. Okay. We're going to slow down to speed up. Right. I can make a hundred cold calls probably in half of a day, but what's the point of that? If I'm going so fast through these calls, they're just hanging up on me anyways, or I'm just trying to speed up the process that, that it's not working anyways. I would rather slow down, build up a little bit of this reciprocity, build up a little bit of this trust and then get a higher conversion rate. Okay. So whenever you make these calls, very first thing is we're going to establish some type of relevancy. Okay. So think about your list. Did you target your list by industry? Hopefully, right? Uh, did you target by industry in a certain geographic area? Did you target a list of your chamber of commerce members? Are you targeting people who are from your um, a certain association or a trade event that you just attended? So I want you to think about the list that you have that you're going to be calling and where can you find this commonality? Okay, where can you find a point of reference or, or a, 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 this relevancy with them? So that when you call them, and you'll see a few examples over here, so that when you call them, you can literally create that relevance in the beginning. So example, here I go. I'm going to be Cyber Joe. Cyber Joe is always my alias for, for cold calls and emails. You look like Cyber Joe. Learn. I know. I'm, I'm Cyber Joe at ABC Tech. Okay, so I would say... Um, Hello. So someone says, hello. Hey, hey, how are you? They're going to say, great. Awesome. So um, my name is Lindsay. We actually just spoke about two weeks ago at the last 
chamber mixer. Yeah. At the Atlanta, Southwest Atlanta chamber. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about your, your dog or whatever. Right. So if I would have met this person previously, I would bring up that commonality. Now, if I had never met this person, which is probably going to be the case for a lot of us, because we're calling outside of our area sometimes, then we're going to have to think, um, was there, you know, are they within a certain industry? Are they a part of some type of association? Is We can always talk about the weather, right? Like if you don't know what else to talk about, talk about the weather. Okay. So you would say, um, hey, how are you? Great. How are you? Awesome. I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, the weather has been so beautiful lately, right? And it sounds kind of cheesy to talk about the weather and the beginning of a phone call, but it's just something to break the ice. It's just one, it's just one small thing. You don't have to go into this big long spill, but something to just break the ice in the very beginning to just get them to let their walls down, right? How many calls? Well, now we probably all ignore them because we know it's spam, but before we ignored unknown numbers, how many calls would you get that as soon as they start saying, hey, this is so-and-so from the XYZ, blah, 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 and we're calling about your click. It's like immediately click. So if you just slow down and you take those extra seven and a half seconds to talk about the weather, okay, it's going to make a big difference in, in the trajectory of that phone call. Okay, so make some type of small talk in the beginning. Now, whenever you go on to the next stage right here, we're moving into the purpose of our call. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, Logan, what are some of your best ways to start out these calls? I'm just curious. Yeah, absolutely. So for me personally, I've I've done a lot of different cold calling, different niches. And in, in some, I've had people who've wanted me to press hard, try to hard sell right off the bat. What I've noticed is the, the most success I've had is using some something called the Sandler methodology, which is just permission-based selling. So I'm asking for permission to sell them on something. So I could just open up a call by just confirming who they are first. So like, hey, how's it going? Is this Chris? Chris would be like, oh, yeah, this is this is Chris Weiser here. Then I could say, perfect. My name's Logan. I know that I'm calling you without an appointment right now. You could just get that out of the way. They know it's a cold call. That's perfectly fine. I know I'm calling without an appointment right now. But if you just give me 22 seconds, I'll explain who I am, how I could help you. And if at the end of the 22 seconds, you feel there's no interest there, then we could just hang up the phone. Sound fair enough? And it does sound fair to give up 22 seconds. You have 22 seconds. So the phrasing in sound fair enough at the end there is just enough to be like, well, yeah, that doesn't sound unfair. So you'll get a <laughs> yes there. And then quickly just give them 22 seconds on what you do and how you could help them directly on the application of how you help. And from there, you'd say if it makes sense to talk about it more on a different call. My big thing is not trying to close someone or really sell something while we're on that like preliminary call. All I'm trying to do is build interest in another call. We're trying to get them from this call to this call. We're not trying to close them right here. Yeah. So I just ask for permission. Tell them it's going to be 22 seconds. See if that's fair to them. And then move on to showing them how it's valuable for them. And at the end of the day... The biggest thing that I've noticed in all of sales is we're trying to help this person. If we genuinely believe that we could help this person, then it's not even selling. We're not trying to sell this person. We're just trying to help them. So if you keep that mindset and you focus on your tone, if you sound like a pleasant person to speak to, then you're going to do just fine. Do your hundred calls. You'll be good to go. Yeah, that's it. So, it sounds so simple, right? Just sound like a pleasant person to speak to. Huh. The tone is so key. Like if you're just speaking like a kind person and you sound like a good person, then yeah. they're probably going to think you're a good person. Yeah. Chris, you're out of the works for this one then. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, get out of here. I, I have something that I want to bring up from Raphael that, uh, could you guys see that or Lindsay, at least see uh, that. Yep, yep. Are you addressing that in your slides? Or uh, let's see. I, I couldn't read it cause it was kind of long. Let's see. I've been kind of hiring and outsource what's the best approach so it's, it's kind of about hiring appointment centers and it's, it's a specific yeah, okay. so let's yeah. bring that up and, and just and again that's going to cover up logan for a second but um this is a question i get a lot especially because most msps don't like to do calling and and you know we had a comment in here that said i'm i'm an engineer uh, i don't like to do this okay that's fine i don't like to do it either i have done it in the past more more importantly to figure out what my flow was and to kind of I'm a believer in my business that there's no role that's too big or too small for me. Like, so I, I will work on that stuff all the time. And 
notice how I said I go back into calling at times just because I want to make sure the flow's working and everything's there. So here's what I said and to this, and I want you guys to understand that we're talking specifically about hiring an agency. And I'm going to be 100% transparent. Logan's an agency. Logan works with me as an agency. He's been hired to work with my firm. And what's key with this, and I think what you, what's very important, and Logan, we can definitely, I'm very transparent about most everything we do. Actually, I'm very yeah. transparent about everything we do. Um, I reached out to Logan. We met uh, on a separate platform and I reached out to him and I am very specific about saying, here's the type of client I want. Here's who we're looking at. Here's the lists I have. Here's the strategy that I want. And I have been very, very clear from me to you, Logan, correct me if I'm wrong in any of this stuff, that it's our strategy and here's how I want it run. And you and your team have conformed. Obviously, you give us your you know, non-expert opinion, but you get... <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke. Adult opinion. Adult opinion. Adult, at least adulting opinion. Adult yeah. um, but, but what's important is I went to Logan and said, here's how I want this done. Here's my strategy plan. How what feedback do you have? And we pretty much like we're pretty much along the same exact lines as to what I defined. You I just let you guys do what you're good at, which is calling, but it still conforms to my way of having a strategy versus what most agencies will do guys. And this is what I'm going to caution you against. They'll say, okay, I can get you four to eight appointments a month or whatever. I can book you how many appointments a month. Most, most in the, in the B2B lens, like four to eight appointments a month. And they sell their way. They pitch their way. It's not a strategy that you give them, which is very, very dangerous because a lot of times what I've seen, the strategy is we're the cheapest MSP in town. We're the cheapest guy in Jacksonville. We're the cheapest guy in Atlanta. Need IT? Here you go. Because they're doing anything they can to just hit their numbers, not necessarily following what's your strategy or your best practice. So from my standpoint to you, I have no argument with working with an agency. We have 15 agencies that we work with in my company. A lot. Logan is one of them. But you see the relationship we have. We've become friends. We have a great relationship. We go back and forth. I have a multiple of my staff members are agency type contractors, but you still have to run the show and it's got to be your strategy. That's my opinion. Logan, I want your take. And, and Chris, I would definitely piggyback off that. I completely agree. But the big thing with you is you know how to do what we do. So you know exactly what you're looking for. So if you're trying to hire some sort of appointment setter, I would caution against doing hiring if you haven't attempted to do it yourself. Yeah. Because I how could you that. know what to look for, how to manage it, how to gauge expectations if you yourself don't know what that looks like? So if you're going to hire someone, first I would try picking up the phone. <laughs> and then you'll – exactly. You'll, you'll even see the value in what they do. Or at least work. get into a training program. Like this is one of the things that we do in our coaching program, guys, is we give you enough knowledge that you can kind of make that decision. And we have enough fallback. So I, I, Lindsay, correct me if I'm wrong on this. I'd be willing to bet every one of our marketing machiners could hire an agency because they know the path. They already have the strategies because we're doing it as a hive mind versus figuring all this out. And what most MSPs want, oh, I don't want to do this. Just put appointments on my calendar. And then they bitch and moan when the appointments on their calendar are shitty. Like that's literally what happens. I went through it. Trust me. I know exactly what this is. I, I had a company called MSP leads for a while. Logan, I told you about this to where we did appointment setting for MSPs. We got very good at it internally. And I'm like, Oh, we, I can make a lot of money selling this to other MSPs. It's just different in different markets. And I found that my people, because I was not tight on the stretch, it was a great learning experience, but I found that it was very difficult to guarantee. And the second the MSP doesn't close the deal, they're blaming you when you can't control any of that. So be very detailed about this. Be very specific about this and be very controlled. 100% use agencies, but use your strategy. Yep. So oh, yeah. good, which, and, and just to echo that, the reason this is why, like we mentioned our first time appointments as a service that right now only goes out to our elite members, because we know that if we set this appointment for them, we know that they know how to run the sales yeah. process. They know how to sell. I have 100% confidence in all of my marketing machine students. I know that they know how to go out and get a lead. Just like with, with our sales students, I know that they know how to go out and run the play. So 
hence the coaching. Like, this is why we do what we do. I, we don't want you to do the cold calling forever, but I want you to, I, I want you to know how to roll up your sleeves and then do it if and when you need to. That's why. Yeah. All right. So really good stuff. Okay. So we uh, beginning, very, very beginning of our call, we're going to create relevancy, whether this be through talking about the weather or establishing some type of trust in the beginning, or we ask, we use this permission-based selling as Logan mentioned, and we say, Hey, um, I'd like to have your time for 22 seconds. Um, does that sound fair to you? Basically you can go either route. Then we're going to be moving into the purpose of our call. So this is where we're actually delivering and we're saying, Hey, here's what's going on. Here's what I would like for us to do. Here's how we can help you. Here's a solution or uh, this value piece that we can deliver to you, okay? So I'm not selling them anything here. I'm not trying to get them to sign up for a CSRA. I'm not scaring them to death by telling them that they're gonna be hacked in the next 48 hours. I'm not telling them that I found their information on the dark web, okay? I've seen this play out and it usually doesn't end in your favor, okay? Trust me on this. Um, my marketing machine or my previous prior to marketing machine, um, they've tried this and it doesn't always work the best. Okay. So you want to keep this sweet and simple and you want to drive them to your very next touch point, which I recommend, we recommend it being your webinar, being this one to many type of conversion event where it's you, you're one person and you're speaking to many people at one time through your webinar, a seminar, a lunch and learn, um, a workshop, a masterclass, et cetera, which is what we teach in Marketing Machine, okay? So the way that this would go is you would say, hey, so we're making sure, uh, basically we're making sure that all the CPAs here in the Atlanta area are proactive in protecting their data and they're proactive in the new FTC safeguards that are rolling out here in just a few months. Uh, we're actually putting on a training next Thursday, where we're going to be walking through with our CPAs, making sure that you guys are protected and that you've got everything in place. Uh, would you and your team want us to send over that invitation so that you guys can get into this training? That's it. I'm not asking for their payment information. I'm not trying to get them um, into any type of like big decision right here. I'm just saying, would you like to go to this very next touch point, this very next step where I can educate you some? Okay. I've brought up the problem. So I'm, I'm helping to build their awareness. I've said, um, you know, these FTC safeguards are rolling out in a few months. We're making sure that the CPAs or my industry, whatever industry it is that I'm focusing on in the XYZ area. So I'm creating specificity there. I'm being very specific that, Hey, this is for you because naturally people want to exclude them and think they want to exclude themselves. Uh, it's just like human psychology. They want to think that they're the special one and this doesn't apply to them. So I let them know this does apply to you. You're a CPA in the Atlanta area and the FTC safeguards is rolling out. We're putting on this uh, training where we're making sure that you guys are protected and that you've got the right things in place. Do you want an invite? I can, uh, I can go ahead and send that over to you and your team. And they're going to say most, most of the time they're going to say something like, um, yeah, sure. I, you know, we actually have a current IT, IT department. Um, yeah, absolutely. Tell them to come in as well. Sure. Uh, what's the best email to send that over to, which brings in to my next slide right here. Okay. Or they're going to say, um, okay, yeah, that, that sounds good to me. What day is it? What time is it? You tell them the day and time they say, great, sure. We'll try to make it. Okay, cool. What's the best email to send it to? You're always going into confirming their uh, point of contact and their info. Okay. Now let's say that they say, well, oh yeah, next Thursday at 2 PM. That, that doesn't really work for us. We're actually busy during that time. No worries. How about this? What I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and put you um, in queue to speak to our cybersecurity team. We'll chat with you 15, 20 minutes and just make sure that you guys, that you have these things covered. Okay. How does that sound to you? I'm sure that sounds good. All right. How's next Wednesday at 3 PM. So then you're going to shoot back a time. You don't want a lot of back and forth. You don't want to make it complicated. You don't want to send them a, a calendar for them to go find a spot. Like you're never going to hear from them again. They're gone, right? So we are going to always, and again, it kind of goes into the next uh, slide over here, always schedule that next touch point. So if they say that that time doesn't work for them, they can't make your training, et cetera. Don't, how, how about this? I'm going to fast track you. We're going to go ahead and get you on the phone with our cybersecurity team. Uh, we'll do a one-on-one -on -one call with you and make sure that you guys are hitting these points. Okay. How's next Wednesday, 1 PM. And then you just shoot a time out there. You have your calendar pulled up. Okay. On your screen and you just propose a time. 
All right. Yeah, the key there is just low yeah. friction. Like we want as little friction as possible. So <laughs> the more options we have available to share to them, like if we're going on with one thing one time, then we might be in a little trouble. But even if it's, hey, what's a good email for the recording on that webinar then? I'll send that over right after. Whatever yeah. it may be, we just want to make it low friction to get them the value as quickly as possible. Because after they've seen the value, then we could start kind of presenting some sort of pitch. But let's get them the value as fast as we can. I love that. Absolutely. Low friction. Just make it so easy for them. Like how many decisions do we have to make in a day? So, so many. So give them the least amount of decisions as possible. Just make it easy. Make it easy for them. All right. So we've stated our purpose. So now again, we move into confirming our point of contact. We make sure that we're speaking to the right person. And then we always schedule that next touch point. Okay. Now we've got our script here. I'm going to go ahead and drop this in so that you guys can grab this. You do not have to give us your email address or anything. Sorry, Logan, I'm covering up like half of you, but go he ahead. Looks better. He looks better. There you go. <laughs> Actually, I can listen to the comments right here too. Um, but you yeah, it's just tough because it doesn't go out to all the platforms. So it's good. It's better. So if you guys are watching this, just screenshot that or type it in. Note it's sevenfigurems.link forward slash CC kickoff. And it is case sensitive. So be mindful of that. It's a bitly. So it's a little bit tricky at times, but it works well. Yep. Okay. So go ahead and grab that. That is literally an asset from our marketing machine vault um, of our cold calling script. Okay. And you'll see in that script that we have two different paths. We have the one where I get straight to the decision maker, which is great. We always like decision makers to talk to. But then you also have the other path where maybe you don't make it to the decision maker and instead you talk to the gatekeeper, which is fine. Gatekeepers are people too. And a lot of times they are influencers and in whether or not uh, they work with you. So we want to be nice to gatekeepers. Do not be mean and ugly and try to get past them. We don't want that. Okay. Um, so let's look through this quickly. <clears throat> let's go through your decision maker outline first. So, hey, how are you? We're both members of the BNI networking, uh, the Jacksonville group. Yeah, yeah. How are you? Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, we missed you last night at our meeting. Okay, no worries. Hey, we're calling uh, just to make sure. Um, have you guys heard about the Federal Trade Commission's new safeguards for CPAs? Okay, I'm just going to open up. Uh, no, we haven't heard that. Or yeah, we have or, or whatever. Right? I'm going to open up. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so as you may have heard, cyber attacks are way up and we've got these new FTC safeguards rules that are rolling out. Uh, what are you guys doing this quarter to ensure that you're protected? Or are you currently working on this? I'm kind of opening up for conversation here. I'm listening. I'm just seeing where they are. This is especially helpful to bring up more of these open-ended questions. Um, if you are just starting out your cold calls, and you just need to gather some data, okay? If you just need to get data and you need to figure out what people are doing or what they're not doing, maybe this is your first time ever doing this, be okay with asking questions. Be okay with, with op asking these open-ended questions and just seeing where people are. Data drives decisions. So if I can open up for these questions and I can hear from them, oh, well, most people are telling me they've never heard of it. So that lets me know that I've got to create education around what are the FTC safeguards. Okay. And now if you're not in the US, FTC doesn't apply to you, but this is for anything across the board. Okay. Um, you can use your own regulations in your country or you can use, um, hey, you know, cyber attacks are way up. Did you actually hear about the breach that just recently happened with the CPA firm uh, just over in XYZ County? And so you can bring up this problem awareness. You can raise their awareness by sharing a recent event with them. And then we're just, again, it's like just open real, one thing really quick. Just be careful when you're talking about this, not to, it's not a FUD discussion, not yeah. a fear, uncertainty and doubt discussion. It's educate. We wanted to make sure you're aware. We wanted to make sure that you understand yeah. that it's, this is a real thing. Also side note, pro tip helps to partner with a viable partner on this that might be a, a, an association. Maybe you have a guest on from the association. Uh, I'll give you a great example on this. We do our live events. We have Chris Voss speaking at our live event. Big name goes along. I got to pay him. I got to work with him, but it's a good way to bring validity and, and to get people interested. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. 
Uh, okay, so we're gonna uh, talk to them, kind of raise their awareness on that, and then I'm moving into the purpose of my call. Okay, so I've created that relevancy, I've established some of that trust there. Now I'm moving into the purpose of my call. So I'm saying, hey, we're actually hosting a training, a community-wide training this coming up week for CPAs in the area. We're gonna be teaching how to protect your company from cyber attacks. And we're also gonna be teaching on what you guys need to do to make sure that you're protected against these new safeguards, okay? Uh, I'd be happy to send that invitation over to you. Does that sound good to you? Okay, so I'm just, here's what I'm doing. I'm reaching out, I wanna see you come into this training. Here's exactly what we're teaching. Can I send you the invite? That's it, that's all I'm doing right there, okay? They're gonna say yes or no, X, Y, Z. And then you move into, um, okay, great. What's the best email to send that over to? Or like Logan said, oh, no worries. We'll shoot you the replay link. What's the best email to send it to? Okay, hey, in the meantime, how about I go ahead and put you on the calendar to speak with our cybersecurity team, okay? And we'll just put you in a one-on-one -on -one and we'll get <coughs> you what we need to cover. Bless you. Bless you, Chris. Oh, shit. I thought I was unmuted. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So uh, simple. So this is, this is it. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. Um, okay, anything that you would add to this, Logan? Because that wraps up that uh, that flow right there. So anything that you would add or that you would tweak to this, Logan? Really, no. I think you have it good there. Um, I would just want to touch again on tonality because that's going to be one of the biggest parts. And, and realizing that people are smart and people don't like to be sold to so much. So just setting proper expectations when the call even starts, telling them what's going to happen. Because that's really how you get cussed off the phone or you get that angry no is if you aren't just having genuinely good social cues or understanding the situation that you're in. So good tonality, good expectations. Those are the keys. Yeah, and definitely good. creating those extra touch points. Yeah. Yeah. And, and confirm the touch point, bringing them to the next spot. And you're not trying to outsmart anyone or outwit them. We're showing exactly. up. Exactly. We're showing up like genuinely, like literally, like you do need to know about these safeguards and we are reaching out to the community and, and we're showing up with, with the service that we have. That's going to build long-term trust and sustainability with your lead generation. Agreed. All right. So you can see here, who's this from? Carmine, let me make my screen bigger. Um, he said, hey, we cold called an accounting firm. So notice industry specific accounting firm about FTC safeguards, had a great conversation with one of the partners uh, doing a risk assessment. We're going to follow back after New Year's. I think this was back in December. Yeah, that was back in December. Um, and I think that actually did move forward to a CSRA. Carmine, if you're watching, let us know in the chat how that ended up. <laughs> All right. So then same, pretty much the same flow with your gatekeeper. The only difference here, okay, the only thing with your gatekeeper is I'm going to be resourceful and I'm going to ask if they can plug this training into their calendar. I'm going to say, hey, do you have access to uh, to the company calendar? If you do, we, I'd be happy to go ahead and send this over um, and you can plug it in. And we'd love to get your team into this training. So I'm just going to get resourceful. I'm not going to try to push and shove and try to get past them again, outsmart or out with them. I'm not doing that. I'm treating them like a human. Um, if they're local, I'm going to be if I know that that gatekeeper, that's their job. Like that is their job is to filter out the riffraff from getting through to their supervisor. So if I'm local to the area, I would probably take that gatekeeper some coffee or I would stop by and show my face. Like I would, I would go above and beyond, slow down to speed up. And I would do something to create that report and that trust. Um, actually we do this internally. So Amanda, um, our marketing officer, she actually will send out cookies or she'll send out like a Starbucks card or like she'll, she'll make these very, you know, personal touch points like cards. Our, our one that we're doing. So we're doing one for uh, the Nashville event. That is, uh, she just sent it to me the other day. Uh, it's well, I don't remember what that one is actually, but I'll say what we did for our Charlotte event. That was, uh, we did, we rented out the whole NASCAR hall of fame for our evening event. Uh, Lindsay, that was super fun, right? I know your husband was, was there too. It was really cool. We sent out a little kit with hot wheels cars and in inviting people. So, Yes, it's like five bucks a package, but if we get them to show up and come to our event, that's that's so important, right? So that's shows you how also how important the list is. You don't want to be sending out five dollar packages to you know everybody on the street corner. You want it to be a viable, real opportunity. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. 
Um, okay, so just keep in mind with your gatekeepers, we're not trying to be rude to them. We want to reframe what it means for a gatekeeper. Like they're doing their job. And if they're doing their job, they're keeping out the riffraff, we want to differentiate ourselves. We want to show them that we do have something of value. Uh, we do have something that could help their company. Okay, we could help them. We have this thing. Um, also, you could invite the gatekeeper and say, hey, listen, I know, um, listen, I know that your job is, is to keep out the, the riffraff. Like your job is to filter through what gets through, uh, what gets through the office. So how about this? How about you come into our training and come through, check it out. We're going to be speaking on the FTC safeguards, making sure that your company is up to date with these. Okay. So how about you come in, check it out. And then if you feel like it's something that needs to go through to your IT department or to your supervisor, then you can go ahead and pass it through. Okay. So how about I send you over that invite? Does that sound good to you? And so then you let them into it and, and like give them this establish a sense of pride that they're the ones that get to come in and see if this is worthy or not of going through to the decision maker. Okay. Um, that's going to go a lot farther than you say it. I need to speak to so-and-so and it's very important. And like trying to like, again, meet resistance res with resistance. And then you have like this contest, like that's not going to work. That's only going to go so far. And another strategy that you could mix in there, it'll make a lot more sense next week after a cold email is covered. Uh, mm -hmm. But you could mix in something called warm calling to get past these gatekeepers. And essentially what we're doing there is we're sending an email to these people. Once we get some sort of interested response, that's when we call them. And when the gatekeeper is like, who are you? You'd be like, oh, well, I'm Logan. I was chatting with Chris over email and we wanted to continue that conversation over a call here because we were already talking. We we're just talking about continuing our previous conversation. Then you're going to have a much easier time. You just feel like, hey, I'm Logan. Like Chris knows who I am. You could patch me through and we'll just continue that conversation. It's a lot easier when you've had that prior contact. But again, that's just a finite thing. Like there's only so many emails we could send. So Lindsay was covering some really good strategies to do when it's purely cold contact and even making it less cold by just sending those gifts, maybe even a gift card, some local coffee. Who knows? There's a lot of different strategies you can mix in there. Yeah, you're going to get a wet, like that's where the money is. Like that's where I'd like, why did the money sound? When you email someone and you call down on them, that's where the money is. Like whenever you can send an email and then you can literally say, hey, this is Lindsay. Yeah, we sent over the checklist. Have you guys haven't had a chance to go through it yet? They're probably going to say no. They got busy. Like, let's be honest. They probably, they may have asked for the checklist or whatever it was or your replay, et cetera. Okay. They're going to say, no, we didn't have a chance to, oh, oh my gosh, no worries. How, no, I, that's my language. So I'm making it me that that's Lindsay language, right? Making it personal. Expert language. That's my expert language. So I would say, Hey, no worries. How about we set up a time? We'll go through this with you. How's next Thursday at 2 PM. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's just block out a time and we'll walk through this checklist with you and make sure that you guys are on the right track. So now I literally have a reason to call them. I'm calling to see if they went through that resource that they raised their hand and they said yes for, which will make sense next week in our, in our walkthrough of cold email. So thank you for touching on that, Logan. Yep. Um, okay. Anything else you want to add here, Chris? No, I think it's just, I will agree having, and, and something that I actually had on, on my phone here. Let me see if I can find it again. We had a really good situation here where, Here's one of our members. This is Robbie Downs, uh, where he actually is doing a webinar, Why You Need a Cybersecurity Risk Assessment. You can see it's May 3rd at 1 p.m. Central. Great example. Drive people to things like this. And you can't be afraid of doing this stuff. Like you have to put yourself out there a little bit to make money. Yep. Best time ever you guys have ever had in this industry right now. By far. I built an MSP and sold it. I wish I would be, could rewind and do it all again in this timeline. Cause it's like unbelievable what you have right now. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rob is actually building out his funnel this month in marketing machine. So that's so cool to see that. I have not seen his graphic for it yet. Yeah, that's, that's, really uh, that's brand new. That post is two hours ago. Come join me for an informative webinar about cybersecurity and how it affects your small business. But yes, that is. That's awesome. And um, he actually has had his marketing um, team in there with him. So they've been working through it together. That's really cool. So super happy for you guys. Okay. So this, I believe we're going to be kind of rounding things out. Always, you know, schedule your next touch point. You've literally heard us do that in practice. 
Um, we're not just getting off the call and we're saying, no, no worries. We'll just call you back later. We're not going to do that. We're, we're business people. They're business people. We have things to do. They have things to do. We're going to schedule a time to call back or have the call with them. We're going to schedule that next touch point. Um, so that is a, uh, that we're going to put a bow on it now. So I would love to hear in the chat, what, uh, what was your biggest takeaway? What is an improvement that you can go and make in your cold calls? Okay. Uh, so let me hear in the chat, what, what's your biggest takeaway? And then I do have a challenge for you. So I know that you all love mm, challenges. I like, I like challenges. Yeah. yeah. I like, this is a challenge. I encourage you, every single one of you can do this today, really. You could go find a list of 20 ideal clients or 20 leads. And I encourage you to use what we just learned and go and make 20 calls. Go make 20 calls. If you don't have a webinar, I don't care. Just invite them to a cyber security strategy session with you or cyber strategy session. Okay. Bring them. That's your first time appointment. Okay. Let us know 20 calls. Let's go do 20 calls and then let me know how it goes next week or, or message us or comment with us or, um, shoot me, or shoot me a DM. Yep. Like, you're welcome yeah. to do that. Find me yeah, on Facebook. Absolutely. Shoot me a DM. I promise you, like if you do this, you, you could score one first time appointment. I, I, I have no doubt. And the big differentiator is honestly, it's kind of like, I, I haven't worked out in a year. What's the biggest step? Getting Starting. into the gym. Getting into the exactly. gym. And going, right? So half the battle is this. And I know this stuff is uncomfortable. I know it's difficult. But discomfort is where growth happens. Without question. Every single time. So push yourself to something you're not used to doing. Think about how important lead gen is that faucet that we talked about earlier. Like, in fact, to give you guys an idea, Logan, I don't know if you saw what, what Lee Bond's doing on the other side, but literally since we've been on this call, he's booked four appointments for our, our sales team. So yep. like, this is the stuff that it, that it does guys. You can turn the faucet on. It works really, really well. Um, you just have to have a little bit of system with it. That's super exactly. Cool. People think that they need the perfect webinar on the other end, the perfect lead magnet, the perfect script, the perfect dialer, the perfect software, all this to, to start cold calling. You have your phone right in front of you right now. You can just Google your ideal company, go to the contact us section on their website, grab that number and just start calling. You don't yeah. need the perfect situation to start doing it. It is so simple. Uh, it's just scary. So the only way to overcome that fear, picking up the phone. That's yeah. it. We were talking in the green room, Logan, about my friend, John. And uh, I remember my friend, John, uh, really got his start. He's now a very highly paid software sales exec in Wisconsin. Um, but he worked in T-Mobile at T-Mobile in the mall and good friend of mine at the time back then. So he kind of was like decent at sales, but he took his first real job and I was kind of helping consult him with this. And, and we've talked about it for years, but he took his first job doing like his first like real non retail job coming out of college and all this stuff um, was selling cold call CEO, high ticket uh, event experiences to CEOs. And one of the things that he had to do, what it was his assignment was he had to find the cell numbers of these high level, high net worth people. And you just call them. Hey, do you like golf? I got a master's package that's ready to fly. Do you want to buy it? Dude killed it, like killed it. And it's propelled him. So learning that skill, that breaking through that fear has propelled him to be a, a million dollar earner as a software sales exec. And Good it's, for him. It's real. Like and this stuff is real, guys. That's awesome. It's a so, skill set, not not a strategy. It's a skill set that carries with you forever. Yep. Um, okay, Do we get time for one question, Lindsay? Yeah, I, the question from Jason. Yeah, I'm going to put that up on the screen here. We're going to cover up Logan again, which is my, honestly my, becoming my favorite thing to do. Um, I'm going to actually, I'll take, my this, I'll, I'll take the slide down. We'll bring Logan back on here. Okay, now we got to see you again. But there we go. The question from Jason is how much time should we give the webinar campaign for maximum exposure and lead capture? Um, now, what's really key about this, guys, on a webinar, you can't put out some crap title. And some, uh, the content's irrelevant because it, you know, I mean, obviously you want decent content, but you can't put out some crap title that people don't care about that you like, that you think is cool. It's got to be something that your ideal prospect sees as valuable, mission critical. Like that is the most important thing. So I think that out there being considered, I'd give it two to four weeks 
my number is kind of three. That's my opinion. Lindsay says two. We do. Um, I'll tell you exactly what we do in the marketing machine. So we do a 14 day like promo period. We literally just set this up today in marketing machine. Uh, we do a 14 day promo period. So that's where you're actively promoing your email list. You're actively promoing your calls, et cetera, driving them to that webinar. And then you repeat this every single month. So this is not, yeah, his is in less than a week. His is next week. Um, yeah. So he actually is doing a, a, so we literally talked through this this morning and we said, Lindsay, if this is supposed to be 14 days, he's going to plug in like a three or four email series to, to just get it going by next week. Yeah. But exactly this is right. also why always be marketing, always build your list, always work on this stuff because, <clears throat> you know, Jason, for you, we've, you know, Jason's been on a few of these uh, and I know you've been here and you've been paying attention and he's been all the, on a lot of our trainings you got to start somewhere and you got to get going, but doing it consistent, consistently. I, I talk about persistency and consistency. Like those two things are critical. This is now our 14th week in a row of doing this every Wednesday, 1230 training. Lindsay, what is our engagement now compared to what it was on the second week? It's oh my in, gosh. It's, it's insanely it's so different. different. Yeah. <clears throat> it's insanely different. We got a hundred comments on this. We got all kinds of stuff going on. We got hundreds of people watching. We got all this stuff going on. It's just different. And it was, you know, so we started with something 15, 14 weeks ago. We're still going. So consistent, persistent, hammering stuff out, using it. People bitching at me for the everyone take. I'm get, I'm not charging anybody for this content. I'm giving you guys massive value. If you don't want to, yet my answer now is kick ban, kick ban. If you don't like it, get the fuck up. Oh, sorry. Uh, but anyway, that's my whole concept here is like, Get yourself in front of people. Be confident about what you're doing. Don't worry about not being called an expert. Like, don't worry about all this stuff. You got to start somewhere and you're going to get better at it. The only thing better than perfect is done. Really yeah. important stuff to think about. Yeah. Okay. Well Sorry about the F-bomb. That's just, that's just me. Sorry. Right, it here. is what it is. It is what it is. Um, I'm going to get yelled at for that by somebody, but it, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. It'll just, they'll just add it to the Chris Weiser sucks Facebook group. Yeah. Add it to the Reddit thread. Yeah. All right. Well, this, that's all I got. I hope that this was helpful for you all. Um, we'll put the, actually the link is in the comments. Um, you should be able to grab it. I'll, I'll throw it up again, there there, it is. There's your link again. Uh, that's a phenomenal uh, free giveaway from Lindsay. There's no opt-in or anything on that. It's just literally a direct to a Google sheet. Yeah. Right. That's a Google doc. It's a share point. Okay. That's a share point, but yep. yeah, exactly that. Logan, any parting words from you, buddy? Hey, it was a pleasure coming on. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for letting me join. It's good being an adult here, expert, all the things. Yeah, awesome. Okay, sounds good. Lindsay, great job today. Really good to see you guys. Um, we'll be back next week, Wednesday, 12.30 Central Time. Lindsay, what do we got next week? Cold email next week. So Ooh. we'll be tying it all together, cold email. So we had cold prospect, prospecting playbook. We got cold calling today, cold email, tying it together. Uh, this is all important stuff to be working on and actively pursuing. And I'll tell you guys, I practice what I preach. We brought in, brought in our agency today. So think about this and just start making some calls, start working on it, build your list, work on this stuff. And if you have any questions, shoot me a DM. We're not shy. Like I'll, I'll help all you guys out for free. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. We'll talk soon. Lindsay, great job today. It's good to see you guys and have a great week and we'll see all you guys right. soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.